post. Hey, Michael, good to see you. Uh, yesterday, you talked about in the third <laughs> quarter them picking on Mike in the pick and roll, isolating and attacking him. Obviously, you know, you, you give Dame an inch and, and he can get a shot off. But do you guys need to fight more to not concede the switch? Do you think that, that, that that's kind of an avenue where you can improve for game two? Yeah, well, the, the first part of that is I actually think Michael did a pretty good job defensively. Um, you know, one time in the first half, he switched on to C.J. McCollum. C.J. drove him. Michael was able to get a great block at the rim. Uh, second half, similar situation, Mike. Uh, Dame Lillard attacked him off the switch, and Michael was able to use his length at the rim and block his shot. Um and both those guys, I mean, we, they were 40% from the field, both of them, which is really a terrific number. If you take away the nine free throws or cut that down for Damian Lillard, take away some of the pull-up threes that he got in pick and rolls, you know, I think we did some good things on him. Regarding the, the second part of your question, though, in terms of switching Michael onto them, we did both. We switched on early, uh, and he was able to score. He was able to draw the foul on the shot fake against Michael. Uh, but we also showed with Michael and tried to get through and, and, and kind of keep him off Lillard a few times as well. Um, so I think moving forward, we'll probably do a combination of both. You know, there'll be times where we switch screens and Michael's got to press up, stay down on shot fakes like he did, uh, and, and just get really big and make him finish over your length at the rim. And then sometimes, you know what, we won't just switch it and give into it. Uh, give them different looks, which I think you need to do against a great player in Damian Lillard. Katie Wingy, Altitude Sports. Hey, Coach, can you just take us into the film room this morning and talk through some of the clips that you guys talked about and, and how the team received those? Yeah, well, they received it well. Uh, I think uh, my message you know, going into it, Katie, was uh, – there's never any need to panic. You know, we're down 1-0, obviously. Would love to have won the game last night. Um, we're up by nine points in the third quarter uh, with four or five minutes to go in the game. It's a four-point game. So we put ourselves in a position to have success against a really good, talented, and playoff experienced team in the Blazers. Um, I think the, the second part of the film session was just showing the, the areas that we need to be a little bit more disciplined in. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, we gave up nine points, three threes in pick and rolls where our bigs weren't at the level. So now you have one of the best pull up three point shooters in the business dribbling into his shot and knocking it down. Uh, we gave up eight points to the roller. All right. Six of those being in the first half. So as that big is up and that big rolls, Nurkic or Canner, we have to be early with their help. Um, you know, we looked to get the ball out of Lillard's hands at times. We didn't rotate accordingly and just really poor KYP awareness with their bench. Obviously, Anthony Simons and Carmelo combined eight of 13 from three. Um, and then we showed some good examples of when we did do and execute our game plan correctly and how it had the, uh, the outcome that we were looking for. So the challenge is to be a lot more disciplined uh, closer to 48 minutes. Uh, the, the last thing I'll say on that is, yes, the pick and roll, yes, the three-point defense. We gave up 19 threes, but I, I didn't think we were physical enough. You know, we gave up five end ones last night. If you're going to foul somebody at the rim, you can't let them make the layup and get the free throw. This is the playoffs. We have to be a lot more physical in that regard. Um, playoff type fouls. I'm not saying hurt anybody. That No, that's not who we are. But when you foul a guy, you can't let them get the shot off and make the basket. Uh, we only had nine deflections last night. That was a season low. We need, need a lot more activity. We only recovered one 50-50 ball. That's way too low. So, yes, I thought we played hard. We gave ourselves a chance. But uh, a lot more aggressive, a lot more physical, and most importantly, Katie, a lot more disciplined within the game plan and who we're guarding. Dwight James, NBC Sports Northwest. Uh, Mike, uh, thank you. Uh, I'm curious. Portland's always been a heavy uh, ISO team, uh, last in the league in assists and passes made a few times. But in the last month or so, they have changed. They're moving the ball better and all. And I'm curious what you've seen that might cause that. 
Yeah, and I would agree with that assessment, Dwight. Obviously, I think um, that team, Terry Stotts, their head coach and their players, understood that they needed to really finish the season up on a positive note to put themselves in position to be a playoff team and stay out of the play-in. Um, so I thought their defense really improved, their paint defense really improved, and offensively, uh, the ball movement, the assists, maybe a little, le- little bit less ISO basketball. Uh, they have a lot of talented players. Um, Damian Little last night, I thought he did a great job of scoring, but also being a facilitator. 13 assists, only two turnovers. We were very aggressive with him at times, and that's what great players do. If you're going to put two on the ball, they're going to get rid of the ball and make plays for their teammates. And obviously, I think he kind of sets the tone for that team. Um, so, yeah, that's why they're the number two offense. So many weapons. Uh, guys can get it on their own, but you, uh, you also have guys buying into making plays for their teammates, which really makes them even that much harder to defend because uh, it's not just one-on-one basketball, it's team basketball. Um, my hope is that tomorrow night we'll be able to play closer to 48 minutes. I mentioned after the game last night, I mentioned to our team today, end of the first quarter, 15-4 Portland. End of the third quarter, 8-0 Portland. After we, it's a four-point game with around five to go, they close on a 16-6 to run. Uh, so 39-10 to overall, uh, that's not going to let you win a lot of close playoff games when you allow teams to dominate the end of quarters like we did. Vic Lombardi, Altitude Sports. Coach, because you guys are so seasoned in close playoff series, because you've come back from playoff series before, you talk about your aggressiveness and some of the things you want to see differently. You think it takes a little time for that to start getting in play, maybe that desperation mode because of your recent history there? Uh, no, I don't I mean, I thought we came out and got to a great start, you know, I, and – we are a seasoned team, but the reality is the guys that we're playing right now haven't been a part of that seasoning. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, Faku Campazzo is a rookie. Aaron Gordon is brand new. Uh, Austin Rivers just got here. Uh, Marcus Howard, you know, we're, we're playing guys that were on 10 day contracts and are on two way contracts. So a lot of the guys that are part of that seasoning aren't healthy right now. But um, I don't think this team is waiting for us to be down 3-1 to start playing. Uh, I thought that we got off to a great start. Uh, I thought in the third quarter, again, we got off to a really good start, built a nine-point lead. They called a timeout and went on a really big run, uh, which they're known to do. Um, But uh, obviously down 1-0, we do not want to go to Portland down 2-0 because we know that will be really tough to overcome. Matt Moore, the Action Network. Michael, if you've got to pick your poison between Dame being able to score the way that Jokic did in one-on-one coverage, the open shooters from the supporting guys, and C.J. McCollum, or Nurkic rolls to the rim, you you do have to pick something. What's the poison that you want to pick? Well, we we know going in, you know, 19 threes is is not going to afford us an opportunity to win. Um, You know, that, that was not the game plan. Obviously, you know, Anthony Simons and Carmelo Anthony had a lot to do with that going combined eight of 13 from the field. Um, As I mentioned earlier, you know, I mean, granted, you know, Dame had 34 points, uh, but he took 25 shots to get that. He was 10 of 25 from the field. To me, that's good defense. Um, CJ McCollum was eight of 20 from the field. That's good defense. Um, Now what you have to take away from those guys You can't let Dame get to the foul line nine times a game, which we did last night. And you just can't have the breakdowns in your game plan, which we had too often last night. Uh, uh, Most specifically talking about the the pull-up threes and pick and rolls where we weren't at the level or we were too far down the floor. Uh, The reality is that when you're guarding a great offensive team and a great offensive backcourt, uh, you have to give them different looks, Matt. And if you are going to put two on the ball, you know you're going to put – pressure on your weak side because that big is going to roll. And that's why you need just tremendous fly around multiple effort mentality. Uh, Winning a playoff game is hard and it requires hard work for 48 minutes. And uh, we did a good job of it last night, but we need to be great in all those areas. All right, coach, we got time for one more. We're going to end with Brandon Cristal of KOA. Bring us home, Brandon. 
Well, I've got a couple of different ways I want to go. So I don't know if I want to ask you about Mellow or ask you about your team's uh, maturity. Which would you rather answer? And that's a well, you can like like most people do these days. You can say I have a two parter. I do, I do. I, well, okay, yeah, so let's start so there because because, because uh, we heard it last night from uh, Michael where he said, "Look, we look at this as a chance to go one, you know, to tie it up. Not that we're going to go down 2 And then Monte just said something similar. So at this point, do you not have to have as many conversations because these guys are as seasoned as you mentioned? I mean, I know some of the young guys aren't, but that they right. know the importance. Yeah, I mean. I think we all understand that one and one is a hell of a lot better than zero and two, uh, especially when you go on the road to play a, a very talented team. Uh, I don't. I have no idea. Maybe Dwight can tell us how many fans Portland has uh, in their building, but it's always been a very tough place to play. Uh, so it's kind of whether you're a seasoned NBA playoff veteran or not. It's kind of common sense, um, but um, urgency. We'll be there tomorrow night. The question is, can we sustain it for 48 minutes? I thought to start the game last night, we had it. I thought to start the third quarter last night, we had it. Um, but we just weren't able to sustain it for long enough stretches. And hopefully tomorrow night, we can be a lot better in that area. Um, I'm not sure what your question on Carmelo was, but I'll just say this. Uh, top 10 score in NBA history, still playing at such a high level. And he impacted the game in a huge way last night. And uh, we have to do a much better job of guarding he and Simons into the game. Uh, their bench outscored our bench 34 to 20. Um, and it's incredible to think about a few years ago, people were not were wondering if Carmelo was washed up and done. Uh, and when you watched him last night, I wish you should have retired, would have retired a few years ago because uh, that guy is one of the best one-on-one -on -one players in the history of the game. I'm not saying that because we're playing them. I'm saying that because it's the truth. All right, that'll do it. Thank you. Kurt. All right, let's do it again tomorrow.